Philippians 4, 11 through 12 says, Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. of a woman homesteader by Eleanor Pruitt Stewart, she said, It is true. I want a great many things I haven't got, but I don't want them enough to be discontented and not enjoy the many blessings that are mine. In a world that screams more, 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 we need to stop and listen to the still small voice that says, it is enough. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. And today I am collaborating with a few ladies um, in this video about contentment. Our host is the beautiful Christy from Gracefield Homeschool. And I found her through the homeschool mom box swap that we did a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know, just over Instagram we've been connecting and she asked if I would join her in this collaboration. And I thought it's a beautiful one, especially with Thanksgiving coming up. And so I jumped in and we have a playlist with a few other ladies that are joining with us. Jill from the homeschool life or from at home with Jill. I'm not sure which channel is going to be up with this one. We have Eva from Eva Interrupted who is also going to be joining in. Erica from Keeper of My Home. And you will find the playlist link down below so you can see all of these videos posted. Especially because as we head into the holiday season, what a great topic to really pour into your soul pour into your heart and be prepared. Um, I also have to film this today because this is going up tomorrow. And um, because it's Veterans Day, I have the two kids that I babysit all afternoon. So you, you might hear a little bit extra noise in the background. Usually my kids are used to me picking up the phone or pick up the camera and filming. Um, but I have a couple young ones that aren't used to that. So we'll see how this goes. A lot of what we have is far beyond what most of the world has. Americans have no idea what it's like to live in poverty. According to the national, um, uh, whatever it would be, national data, my husband and I live way below the poverty level for a, a family our size. It's not just one income across the board, it's the base is if you have a family of seven, anything below 40,000 is poverty line. Right now you're propped up on a little doll table that my daughter has. Around the room is filled with dolls and toys and extra shoes. And I'm sitting on some benches that my sons made from some wood that they had collected from the dumpster. My fridge has food in there to eat tonight and my pantry has food to carry us through the next couple of days and I have three fridge slash freezers. If I were to focus on the fact that we live below poverty level, can't you imagine how discontented I would be? Contentment starts with the acknowledgement that we are truly black. Bleh, bleh. That kind of took away that uh, whole driving home point. 
we have truly missed the fact that we're blessed. And just focusing on the fact that you get to wake up, you get to put coffee on, you get to make breakfast for your family, you get to open the blinds of your home to let in the sun. To let in the sun. You get to open the door to let in fresh air. Talk about being blessed. If you're watching this, then you have something that a lot of the world doesn't have. You have a way to watch this. No matter where you're in, where you are income-wise, you have a way to watch this. If it's at the library using the internet, you have a way to watch this. How many people live in huts that walk miles to get water just to sustain themselves? You're blessed. And that starts your contentment journey. Wow, this is a little different background. This is what happens when it's about four o'clock, you're running out of time, and you have 16 minutes of unusable footage because everybody is in the middle of a project. And I'm expecting interruptions, car door opening up. I had a view of what exactly I was going to say in this video. I actually took a long walk this morning trying to put together all my thoughts, which was kind of interesting because I didn't have a pen and paper to write down those thoughts. And usually by the time I get back home and, and breakfast made and the kitchen tidied up a little bit and all the other stuff that I have to do, those thoughts are long gone. Uh, but they sound good while you're walking. All that to say, um, I will keep the opening of this video that I have done so you, you know it's in collaboration with these wonderful ladies. I can't wait to see um, how they will address this. I think for many people, they think the contentment comes naturally or easily to me. Living small, living intentionally, living minimally, I think there is this assumption that having those in place means that you're naturally this type of person. It kind of goes along with people assume that I am natu by nature a very patient person because I homeschool. And the reality is you learn to be patient um, as a mom and as a homeschooler. It doesn't come naturally to anyone. You learn because you're put in a position day after day after day to grow in it. And you can either throw up your hands and say, okay, I just don't have enough patience for this. Or you continue to grow and work on it. And contentment is a lot like that. I actually really struggle with discontent. Um, one of, I will share a, a very simple thing and I think many will be shocked by this. Some that I have talked to will be like, oh, sounds like just like her. Um, but even just moving out here from California to Indiana has been a lifelong dream. It has been a lifelong dream to get out of California and move somewhere green and beautiful and um, the perfect place to homestead, right? And even coming here, there was a lot of discontent. We ended up in a two bedroom house once again. We did not get the acreage that I thought we were gonna get when we got up here, the, the farmhouse, the acreage, the animals, we did not get any of that. We didn't get everything that I had pictured in my mind that would create a picturesque um, transition in life. And even just driving to Walmart once a week that I do, I get to see the the Amish white farmhouses with their clothes hanging on their line on the line, the animals grazing in the pasture, the their little gardens that they have, and. I have to every single time I drive to take that thought captive and turn around and say, Lord, thank you so much for bringing us here. Thank you so much for opening the doors that I thought were closing in on us and they were just different doors that you were opening. Thank you so much that we were able to afford a house. That alone is incredible. Thank you. And, and I just have to keep 
every thought captive because it would be so easy for me to turn oh but if I had that house I could do this with it and then I could really create this lifestyle that I want with it and I could and that seed or that weed tends to take over this life and create a bitterness and contentment is again not something that comes naturally it is something that is cultivated over time it is cultivated by replacing the wants and the desires with acknowledging all the blessings you have christy at graceville journey had given us the option to look at it from a you know homemaking living point of view or a homeschool point of view okay we're gonna have to try to adjust as the sun comes Christy had given us the option to look at this from a homeschool or a homemaking point of view. And honestly, I think it's intertwined. It's easy to look at one area in your life and say, I'm very contented here. But a reflection of another part of your life shows that you really aren't contented. You're just, this isn't your um, pitfall. Whether that is in homeschooling, living, life, whatever. I could be very contented in the hair and makeup department of what I have. It's very minimal. But I really don't care about these things. Could I live a very contented life with the books I have? Working on it. But that is my pitfall. And that is why it goes beyond a feeling. Is it truly contentment if it only works in one part of your life or not? When I sat down and filmed this video, I tried to think really hard. I could share a lot of what my life is like and how it this relates to me. But in filming a video, I have to wonder, how would it help you to know my story? How would sitting down and talking with you help you? For 15 years or more, I kind of lost count after a bit, I sat in discontentment because everything in life was not how I wanted it. I was not a bitter woman by basic standards. I did not mope around. I could still talk with people, encourage people, smile with people, pray with people, laugh. By what you saw, you would not think of myself as very discontented. But the Lord knew my heart. And there is a lot of work to be done on it. A lot. So don't assume, because you're not wallowing in what you don't have, that you have arrived at this, that you have achieved a contented heart. As we look at the Instagram picture perfectness of homeschooling, as we look into the homemaking lives, as we look into minimalism as seen through the eyes of people that have arrived, and thinking we need to get there and not being contented in where we are now. Do you see do you see this? Do you see that discontent can affect so much of your life and in that you miss living? You miss being joyful in what God has given you? Okay, let's close it out here cuz I'm getting to the point where I can't go anywhere. So I hope this video encourages you in contentment. It is not, I'm not here to sermonize to you. I am here to encourage you and I hope this video did somehow, some way. And be blessed. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to check the playlist down below for all the other participants and be encouraged and have a blessed day and I will see you in my next video.